Hey guys, it's Lala. Welcome back to my channel. So as you can see from the title, we are doing another toy time and true crime video. So today's true crime story is on Dorothy Jane Scott. I find, found this to be a very interesting story and we're going to be unboxing some really fun items as well. Um, so before I get started, if you're new, welcome. I hope that you stay subscribed, hang out with us. We do a lot of different things on this channel. I like to do all of the things that are fun for me. And if you're returning, welcome back. So, um, like I said, we're going to be doing the true crime story of Dorothy Jane Scott and the things that we're going to be unboxing today. So first of all, if you don't follow me on Instagram, um, then you didn't see it, but I did put some shelves up and I'll show them at the end of the video that I'm keeping all my little minis on and the ones that I'm going to be opening in the future. So today we're going to be opening one of these it's called unicorn dolls there's one doll inside and i found these on amazon we're also going to be opening a couple of these i got from five below this is a care bears so we're going to be opening i have two of them and then we're going to be opening two of these disney dorables there could be two or three inside you don't know so um, I ended up, you can buy these at a lot of places. I purchased mine off of Mercari and then I had just one of these and five below only had one. So I just grabbed it cause I thought it was cute, but they're called real littles and I'm going to open up the one of these that I have as well. So it'll be like last time I let you guys kind of tell me what you liked and you guys liked me to tell you some of the story while I open them. So I'm going to kind of do it the exact same way this time. So we are going to start with opening the unicorn dolls. Before I open it, let me just give you a little bit of, um, tell you who Dorothy Jane Scott is. So Dorothy Jane Scott, she disappeared on May 28th of 1980 in Anaheim, California. Okay. So that's what it was. That's when she disappeared. On these, look at look at all these super cute ones. Find the gold doll. I always want the rare one, so I always hope I find that one. But I really like Kate as well with the little rainbow hair. Comment down below and let me know which one of these you think is the cutest. Um, all right, let's go ahead and open it before we get started, and then we'll get back into the story. But let's see which one we have. I've never opened these before. Okay, it's in. OMG, I got the gold one. I got the gold one. I have a few more of these that will open in on future videos, but to start us off right, I got the gold one. And her name is, it just says, oh, she doesn't have a name like the other ones. So the other girls have names and she doesn't have one. It's just the gold doll. But so we have to think of a name for her. She can be Lala. No, I don't know. Comment down below. What should we name her? She's so cute. I love her. I love her. With her little pink cheeks. Okay. So we'll go ahead and set her here. So let me give you a little bit of background on Dorothy Jane Scott. Um, next, we're going to open the real little. So like I said, she disappeared May 28th, 1980 in Anaheim, California. So she was a single mom. Um, and she had a four year old child, I believe it was a son and she was living with her aunt. Um, she was a, the where I, the website I looked at, they called her a secretary, but she worked at two different gift shops. She was a Christian and according to her friends, she did not drink or do drugs. Um, her dad said that she did date some, but she did not have a steady boyfriend. Okay. So that's a little bit of background information on her. Well, let's go ahead and open this one and then we'll get into her disappearance. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pull, there's two, of, all right, there's paperwork, which I don't read. Okay, so the first one that we pull out, it's a Marie Callender's Italiano Lasagna. So cute, right? This little box. So inside of these are like the little foods. So you open them up and we'll see what our little 
food looks like. Oh, look at her. It's she's little winky face. It's cute. So it's like a little slice of lasagna. <laughs> look at that. It kind of looks like a brain, right? <laughs> With the fork in her. Okay. Let's set her right there. I don't want you to be able to see her. So we'll put her here by our doll. So that's the Marie Collenders. And our second one. Oh, Haribo Gold Bears Sour. Okay, Haribo Gold Bear Sour. So it looks like the little packaging. And now we'll open it up. How do we open it? Okay, like this. Oh, okay, it's wrapped up. That one wasn't wrapped, but this one's wrapped up. Oh, look. And they're like kind of soft too. They're not like squishy, but they're not super hard. Look at this one. And it's got the bears all the way around it. <laughs> These freaking things are so incredibly cute, I swear. So we're gonna open a Care Bear, but before we get into the Care Bear, so the disappearance. So May 28th of 1980, around 9 p.m., Dorothy um, was at a meeting, like an employee meeting at work. One of her coworkers, Conrad Bostrin, that's at least the way I think you say it. Before we open it, we're gonna finish. So um, one of her coworkers, Conrad Bostrin, he looked pretty sick, I guess, while they were in their meeting and he had a red mark on his arm. So she and another coworker, Pam Head, they um, left to take Conrad to the ER and they went to UC Irvine Medical Center. On the way to the hospital, um, Dorothy did stop by her parents' house because her parents would babysit her son while she, you know, had to work. And so she stopped by her parents' house to check on her son. She, um, also changed her scarf, which was black. She changed it to a red scarf. And then they had, um, then they went ahead and headed down into the ER. The ER said that her friend Conrad had been bitten by a black widow. So a black widow spider. And then they went ahead and treated him. Uh, while they treated him, her uh, Pam and Dorothy waited at the emergency room, and her friend Pam said Dorothy never left her side. They were just there waiting on Conrad. So around 11 p.m., Conrad, that's the person, again, who had been bit by the spider, the Black Widow spider, he was discharged, and the hospital gave him a prescription, obviously, for medication. So Dorothy said, why don't you guys just go ahead and go fill the prescription, and while you do that, I'll go get the car pulled around over here to the exit door. Um, that way Conrad doesn't have to walk far since he's not feeling well, and then we'll go ahead and leave. So they were like, okay, that sounds like a good plan. That's what we're gonna do. So before I go to the next, let's go ahead and open up this Care Bear and see what's here. So there's the Care Bear. This is a cute little packaging. Care Bears. How many of you guys are Care Bear fans? Let me know in the comments. Let's go ahead and I think you just pull it apart. Yeah, you pull it apart. Okay, I really wish they all came in like bags so we couldn't see what it is, but let's open it and see. Okay, oh look, they're so cute. Wow, these are bigger than I thought too. I thought these were gonna be smaller. These are bigger. Now, I don't know the name of all the bears, um, but let's see. This one is Share Bear. So you could get Share Bear, Best Friend Bear, Champ Bear, Grumpy Bear, and all the other ones that are there. So you can collect them all, and we're going to try to collect them all. So right now we have Share Bear. This is what he looks like. And like I said, he's a pretty good size. Okay, Share Bear, and that's what the back of him looks like. Okay, so you have Share Bear. Let's go ahead and set. Let's set him there. Okay, so I went ahead and kind of adjusted this camera angle. Let me know if you guys like this lower um, this lower angle. And you that way, you know, you guys can kind of see the little, our little people better. She does not want to stand up easily. I feel like you guys can see them better. And I don't want y'all to be able to see them because they're cute. I wish that stood up. 
Okay, so I feel like you guys can kind of see them while I tell the story. And then of course, my background is my crafting stuff. I'm slowly but surely reorganizing this area. Okay, so next we're going to open Adorable, but before we do, let's go ahead and, um, before we open the Adorable, let's go ahead and go to the next part of the story. So we left off where Dorothy basically said, okay, I'm gonna go get the car, you guys can fill a prescription. So Pam and Conrad, they went ahead, they filled the prescription at the hospital, and they were waiting at the exit for Dorothy because she said, I'm gonna pull the car around. So after waiting for a few minutes and they hadn't seen her, they decided, well, let's just go walk towards the parking lot. But as they're walking to the parking lot, they see Dorothy's car speeding towards them. Um, the headlights were super bright, so it like blinded them or they weren't able to see who was driving the car. And they started waving their arms thinking, okay, well, maybe she just didn't see us. And the car sped right past them and made a right turn out of the parking lot. So initially they thought, well, maybe she had some sort of emergency that had come up with her child. Um, but after a few hours, they hadn't heard from her. So they reported it to the police. Well, the police basically said, you know, they didn't think it was a big deal. So they didn't do anything right then. Well, at about 4.30 a.m. on May 29th, so like the next day, because the night had gone on, Dorothy's car, which was a white 1973 Toyota station wagon, was found burning in an alley about 10 miles from the hospital. Uh, neither she nor anyone else was around. It was just her car on fire. Let's go ahead and open the Dorable, and then we'll get to the next part of the story. Now, Dorables you can find everywhere. Target, Walmart. Like I said, I got these off Mercari. I had some credits I wanted to use on there. Or some, not credits, but some money that from selling something that I just wanted to use. Um, and they even sell much bigger packs of the Dorables as well. But like I said, this is called the Mini Peak. It's the Mini Peak Dorable. These are, it says, find the special color reveal edition. Um, behind every door, bigger surprise is in store. This one says how many figures inside, two or three. And there are 50 to collect, okay? And this is series seven. So there were series before this, I assume. And this may not even be the newest series. I'm not sure. But this is series seven. So let's go ahead and open the door. Okay. We're doing this together for the first time. Again, I've never opened Adorable. Okay. All right, so I this came with two. Again, this is the paperwork. So just so we know, there's common, rare, ultra rare, and special edition. Of course, I'd like to find special edition, and there are tons of them that you can find. Let's go ahead. We're gonna open up, um, I wanna collect all of these things, so I'm going to keep one checklist from each one so I can mark them off, but so let's go ahead and open our first Disney Dorables. All right, and the first one we have is, oh, it's the Cheshire Cat. But that's, okay, I feel like this is a color reveal, and I think this is one you have to, if I remember correctly, you have to rub him to make the, um, to make the color show up. So let me read the booklet. Oh, okay, just add water. Okay, fill container with warm water, not included, place figure inside, swirl around, and reveal your figure. Okay, so we did get a special color reveal one. And so we need some warm water. So let me go ahead and go grab that and I will be right back. So, I went and got, I filled this little container up I have with warm water. We're gonna go ahead and drop our mystery figure in. Let's give him a, Oh, wow. Let's give it a spin. All right, I have a paper towel right here. We're gonna pull them out and set them on that so we can dry it off. Q. 
cute. So we got a little Cheshire cat. He's so freaking cute. His little tail. I love it. And oh, he's so adorable. I figured that's what he was like by looking at his face, but seeing him with the color is really cool. So we'll go ahead and put him here. And that's what the water looks like um, because all that stuff came off of it. But we'll keep it over there to the side just in case. Okay, so before we open the next one, which will be a Care Bear, let me go ahead and finish the story with where I was. Months leading up to the disappearance, right? Because that's where we were. They found her car on fire. And there was no one around. So, now, months leading up to her disappearance, Dorothy was receiving phone calls from a man saying that he loved her and, like, basically professing his love. She did, Now, she said the voice sounded familiar, but she couldn't place where she knew him from. So, she wasn't really sure who it was. Uh, she basically turned him down and, you know did not was not interested in him or his love and that's when the calls became threatening and so like an example of one of the calls he called her and said one of the threatening calls was when i get you alone i will cut you up into bits so no one will ever find you and he started saying things basically like that so she of course was scared and she started taking karate classes um one another thing that this unidentified man did was he also left a dead rose on her windshield so she you know was afraid and rightfully so so now about four years later on august 6th of 1984 there was a construction worker who discovered dog and human bones side by side about 30 feet from santa Ana canyon road the bones were partly charred and authorities believed they had been there for about two years because apparently in 1982, two years prior, a bushfire broke out and kind of swept across that area and they thought, okay, that's how long the bones had been there. Um, in the same place where they found the dog and human bones, a turquoise ring and a watch were also found. Dorothy's mom, Vera, said that the watch stopped at 12.30 a.m. on May 29th, which was about an hour after her friend saw her car last speeding out of that hospital. On August 14th, so eight days later, the bones were identified as Dorothy Jane Scott's by dental records. Of course, he did an autopsy and they could not determine a cause of death. I have another part that I want to talk about. Well, two actual parts. But before I get there, let's go ahead and open a Care Bear. All right, so what Care Bear will we get? Remember, before we open them, there are a lot we could get. I would like to get hopeful heart bear she's cute the first one here and then there's those all right let's see who we get we got okay a rainbow one this one's name is cheer bear cheer bear is super cute is that cheer bear yes that's cheer bear hello cheer bear Look at the way she's standing, like, yes, she's so cute. I love her. Again, her little tongue is sticking out. Hopefully the lighting is good for you guys. Oh my goodness, Cheer Bear. I just realized we had another adorable that we didn't open. Okay, well, we need to go ahead and open our other adorable because we'll have two or maybe three in this one. So let's go ahead and open our other adorable. All right, so the last adorable, we got the color reveal one and we have this cute Cheshire cat. Let's open our other one and see what we got. 
I'm not looking. It's underneath my desk. I was trying to rip it so none of us could see. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, Raja. And there, this has to be Raja from Aladdin. I love the eyes. So freaking cute. On the adorable list, Raja is listed as... That's not Raja. I'm crazy. I don't know why. I... Well, maybe I'm not crazy. But that's, that's Sher Khan from the Jungle Book. I said Raja. Sher Khan. Okay. Hello, cutie patootie. All right. So since we went ahead and opened that, let's go to the next part. So something else I want to bring up about this is some more mysterious phone calls and not the ones that Dorothy got. So about a week after Dorothy's disappearance, her parents, her parents' house received a phone call from an unidentified man who said, I've got her and hung up. The same man called almost every Wednesday afternoon for years, by the way, and said either that he had Dorothy or had killed her. And remember, these started about a week after she disappeared. And that went on for, like I said, years. And um, again, he would either say that he had Dorothy or that he had killed her. Calls were very brief and usually occurred when Vera, her mom, was home alone. In April of 1984, and remember, it was August when her remains were found, but of 84, but in April of 1984, the man called during the evening and Dorothy's father, Jacob, answered and the calls stopped. Now, after her body was found, the calls began again. Okay, so the police... They installed a voice recorder at the residence at Dorothy's parents' house, Vera and Jacob. So that, but, so that way they could hear this person, but they could not trace the call because the man hung up too fast. The calls weren't long enough to be traced. So before I finish the last part of the story, let's go ahead and open the Dorable, the last Dorable that we have. So we have our Dorable again. Let's see how many will we get in here? Will we get two? Or where the, will there be three? Okay, we got two again. All right, so we're going to open one. I'll open one, I'll finish the story, and then we'll end it on another one, okay? So, let's go ahead, tear it. What did we get? Oh, it's from The Incredibles. Hello, little buddy. I love their eyes. Their eyes are super cute. Um, this is Dash, I believe. Let me know down below if I'm wrong. But that is Dash. I have only seen pieces of this movie. I've never seen all of it, but they're super freaking cute. Very cute. So we have Dash from The Incredibles. Okay, so the last part of the story, before we open our last Dorable, now, a possible motivation in Dorothy's murder surfaced June 12th of 1980. June 12th, 1980, an unidentified man called the front desk of the Orange County Register. The Orange County Register was a newspaper, and that paper had actually run a story on Dorothy's case that same day, so on June 12th. So June 12th, Orange County Register ran the story, then they get a call from an unidentified man. Uh, one of the managing editors there at the newspaper told police that the man called in and said, I killed her. I killed Dorothy Scott. She was my love. I caught her cheating with another man. She denied having someone else. I killed her. The editor said that the caller knew that Conrad Bostron, her friend, had suffered from a spider bite the night of May 28th. Um, he also knew that Dorothy had been wearing a red scarf. And if you remember, she had a black scarf on all day. On the way to the emergency room, she stopped at her parents' house, checked on her kid, changed her scarf from black to red. So the editor said this caller knew that she had been wearing a red scarf. Neither of these details, the, um, the friend who was bit by a spider or the scarf, had been published in that June 12th article. They were not released. The caller also claimed that Dorothy called him from the hospital that night. 
Now, Pam Head, that other coworker that went with them to the hospital, her friend, she disputed that claim and saying that she had been with Dorothy the entire time and that she did not make a phone call. Um, investigators believe that the anonymous caller was responsible for Dorothy Scott's disappearance and death. So as of today's date, which is November the 6th of 2022, they have no idea who killed Dorothy Jane Scott. It is unsolved. Now, I found this story to be really interesting. Um, I will, I highly suggest that if you guys are interested in this story, that you do some other research because there are some bloggers online who talked about some hypothetical scenarios, but there was a lot for me to talk about. So if you guys maybe want a part two of the hypothetical scenarios, let me know and maybe we can do a part two on this one. But I really thought the story was interesting and I hope you guys liked it. And now before we go, we have one doorable left to open. Let's see who we get. All right, ready, set. That is from Princess and the Frog, I believe. That is Louis. Louis. Louis or Louis. I don't know. I looked, I know it's from Princess and the Frog, but I had to look at the chart to get the name. Um, but it's the ending an alligator? Yes, because look at his little butt. Look at his little butt. And he's got the the musical. These things are very small. The musical instrument. They're so cute. And again, the Dorables, I love their little eyes. So that's who we got in today's video. We got Louis or Louie from Princess and the Frog, Dash from The Incredibles, Shere Khan from Jungle Book, the Cheshire Cat, which was a color reveal. And then we got our real littles. This is the Haribo Gold Bears. This one is the Marie Callender's Italian lasagna. We got Cheer Bear. We got um, Share Bear. And then we got the unicorn, the rare gold unicorn doll. That's who we got. So I hope that you guys liked this video. If you did, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to comment down below and let me know what your favorite item, what your favorite mini was that I opened today. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. In case you guys wanted an up close look, I wanted to be able to show them to you. They're so cute.